Just taking Qantas to have a little bit of turnout. He is allowed turnout now. Um, he is getting lots better and he's doing really well. So considering I'm not training him, it's really windy, so I'm sorry if the audio on this isn't great, but I can't control the weather. So um, as he's not in training, a few um, comments over the past few videos is what do I do to train myself as an endurance rider? So I thought now would be a really good time to do that because I'm not riding as as much. I've still still got horses to ride, um, but obviously Qantas is out of training. So oh, let's dizzy hi tears. Um, it really really depends on what my aims are for a season, and my training for a novice year is very different to my training for an FEI year. So as you rider, I was naturally about 47 kilos, but I wanted to do my first 160 before I was a senior, which meant that with my saddle I needed to weigh 75 kilos. And this is kind of where my fitness journey began. So when I was 19, I needed to put on some weight. Ideally, I wanted to be about 55 kilos minimum, 60 if I could, um, so that I didn't have to carry dead weight on my saddle. I didn't have to carry lead. Um, I was at uni at the time, so I went went to the went to the gym, spoke to the instructors, and really got into packing the muscle on so I could be the best rider possible for Tizzy to do her first 160. Background on kind of where my um, knowledge comes from. So I'm a human physio and I'm a certified strength and conditioning specialist. So I kind of you'd hope that I kind of know what I'm doing when it comes to training. Um, in terms of what a rider needs, it's more about strength, endurance, posture, balance, and symmetry. Not so much about cardio. Um, yes, you still need good cardio, but if you're going to put effort into training and you have minimal time as an, in, as an endurance rider and probably rider in general, your effort needs to go into strength, balance, strength, endurance, posture and things like that rather than purely just cardio because how many times do you see a rider out of breath not that often but how many times do you see a rider in a poor position because they're fatigued quite a lot so my main focus when I train is on strength and symmetry and movement and I don't do as much cardio so my normal kind of week in in normal training so not when I'm training to bulk up for muscle for FEI but day to day I would do three um, three sessions at the gym, kind of strength work, and they're usually between half an hour to 45 minutes. And I prefer to do it in the morning because get it done. Um, I'm not very good at doing any kind of working out in the evening because I just want to slob out after doing the horses. So if I get up and do it in the morning, it's more likely to happen. There are some weeks where I struggle for motivation as well, but you know, I always think I don't want to let my body down. I don't want to let my horse down. Put some effort in, Beth. Um, so I do three gym sessions. Then I will do two body weight sessions. One either more a core, leg, whatever I want to focus on, and one more a Pilates -y yoga session. Um, and then I'll do one to two cardio sessions, normally on my bike. If it's not on my bike, then I will do kind of the rower or something. We've got. Um, a rower at work and I'll use that so I like to mix it up um, and obviously then I ride at least six times a week when I've got like horses in full training so yeah I'll take you along for a week of training with me I like to start my week off with a gym session um, I find this kind of the best way mentally for me to start as well because it's like get into the week and you feel like you're going somewhere the atmosphere is a bit more worky than if I did a session at home so I'm gonna take you along I not gonna lie I feel a bit weird about vlogging in like such a public space that isn't horsey um, but meh, who cares this is a, a practice in um, not caring what other people think of me. So I'm gonna take you along. I normally do three gym sessions a week, one by myself and two with friends. It's really nice to do it with someone else because it, it kind of motivates me to go. So when my alarm goes off at 
10 to 6 I literally I'm like and I know that's not that early for some people but for me it's kind of early ish um and I feel like oh I don't want to go today I don't want to let the other person down so I still go and I always feel great for doing it um so I'm going to take you along to my gym session with just me if Callie and Sue are happy with me um videoing them in their gym session too I might show you the sessions we do with them but we'll see not everyone likes being on camera um, and I normally structure those gym sessions um, into kind of six exercises, a five minute warm up and a five minute cool down. And I usually do two lower limb, two upper limb and core. So that's kind of how I structure it. That's how it works best for me and how it kind of keeps me motivated and keeps me doing a bit of everything. There are loads of different ways you can structure your programs and sometimes it's not what is most effective but what is most effective and that you'll do and that you'll enjoy and that you'll keep up. So it's a fine balance. Um, so without further ado, let's go and make me feel awkward in a public space and record me in the gym. <laughs> Welcome to our living room floor for workout two of the week. So I like to go to the gym three times and it's usually a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, sometimes put in a sneaky Thursday depending on how we're feeling. And then I like to do two body weight at home. One kind of a more either an extra abs, upper limb or lower limb and I mix up every week. And one kind of more relaxed yoga style-y. Um, I really like to follow along with YouTube, so even though I am a Pilates instructor, um, I, I still like someone else to do my workout for me. Um, I really like Mad Fit, um, so I'm gonna do a lower ab, one of her lower ab workouts this morning. Just, just so leave it that dog. let's Excuse go. Me. So you can also bend this knee and reach for those toes. workout two in the bag another gym session another <laughs> intro in the car um i'm about to go and gym with callie i'm not going to film this session just because i don't think it's fair to film someone else and i want to spend my time chatting with my friend and working out but just thought i'd check in with you guys so that you know i'm actually here not that you can really see it here is the beautiful burton Meadowside <laughs> Leisure Centre. Um, it's actually one of the nicest gyms I've ever been in and it's, is it council owned? Maybe not, maybe it's private because it's an everyone active, but it's really, really nice. So um, this will be workout number three of the week, I think. 
Yeah, because we're gym, body weight gym, body weight, yoga y stuff. Um, I'll do another gym session with Sue. I won't film that one either, but you know I've been. Um, and then we'll finish off the week with a bit of mountain biking. So I'm about to go get sweaty. <laughs> Workout done. So I thought I'd actually tell you what we did. So we did a sumo squat, weighted sumo squat, a weighted deadlift, followed by some bicep curls into a push press, then skull crushes, which is a, a tricep exercise. Um, then we did some weighted bridges, so weights across the hips. And to finish off, we did some weighted um, kind of knees to chest so you put like a dumbbell between your ankles and then you put your legs out as straight as you can without your back coming up and back in and a couple of stretches and obviously we did a, a warm-up to begin with so I'm a little bit sweaty now but I feel good on to the next day welcome to workout number four today I'm gonna do a um, yoga type workout I like doing the videos on is it yoga with Adrienne or yoga with Adrienne Adrian is a YouTuber. Her YouTube um, videos are all kind of yoga based and there's loads of different um, times and types and so we're just going to do a nice 20 minute flowy one today. So this will be the penultimate workout of the week. I've just got to do cardio. Well, I don't have to do but I, I want to do and I'm going to do um, cardio on my bike and then that will be all of the workouts for the week done. And exhale rounding to session four in the bag I love doing a little bit of yoga something a little bit more chill you don't kind of get as out of breath and sweaty but it's still super hard and you have to concentrate on your breathing so really enjoy doing that and now on to the biking <laughs> lastly it's time for a bit of cardio so I like to go out on my mountain bike for between an hour and two hours once or twice a week um, to kind of get those heart and lungs going and also the good thing about mountain biking is it was also a good upper limb workout lower limb core you get a bit of everything so it's just like road biking is much more smooth much more cardio whereas mountain bike is more cardio and strength so we've got the bikes in the back that's Dan's bike can't really see my bike and we're gonna go round Canic Chase for cardio of the week <laughs> She's not happy just falling off horses. <laughs> I can fall off mountain bikes too. So I fall off horses because the horses are young and inexperienced and they catch me by surprise. I fall off bikes because I'm inexperienced and when I'm trying to kind of push out of my comfort zone and kind of improve my skills, that's where this happens. Luckily, no broken bones, but that was possibly one of the hardest smacks into the floor I've done on my bike. On a blue run. Dan always films this on this hill. This is the hardest part of panic. And I'm the most out of breath. It doesn't look as steep as it is in real life. It's not like steep. It's good there. So 
as you can see, that is my cardio done for the week. Now also, I find this really good practice for controlling my nerves. So when I'm nervous, as you might have seen when I took Qantas to his first competition, when I'm nervous and my heart rate is high and I'm anxious, because my heart rate is high doing this, I'm really out of my comfort zone. I find it quite scary. I don't have the skills for more of the difficult stuff but I'm pushing myself to do it. It's a great way for me to practice my breathing, practice my mindset, um, so that I know what I'm doing and what mental skills to use when I get on a horse and it's a little bit more unpredictable because it's a live animal. I would highly recommend, so I've had sessions with Charlie Unwin, sports psychologist, not sessions, but I've gone to kind of like talks and seminars with him. And if you sign up to Dr. David Marlin, it's in no way sponsored, I pay for it too. It's like a scientific horsey um, research website. They do lots of webinars. Charlie Unwin has got a series on there at the moment. It's well worth the eight pounds just to watch them. And I think there are four or five now. And going through the stuff that he does really helps me prepare mentally for riding and everything I do in life. So hopefully this has been a good insight into what it takes to kind of keep me fit as an endurance rider so I don't let my horses down and keeps me in kind of tip top form, apart from when I crash and get injured. Luckily though, being a physio, I can sort myself out. <laughs>